Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. My name is Nick, and uh, I I just got back from Record Store Day. I hope everyone had a great time. Hope everyone was able to get everything they were looking for. Uh, you know, I it was a, a long night, but I'll kind of go over the what happened and uh, some of the stuff I picked up. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click on the link down below and go check out the Vinyl Den Facebook group. Uh, there's also a link down there for the uh, Vinyl Den merch page if you want one of these cool Vinyl Den t-shirts. I think there's also some sweatshirts and some other kind of different styles on there. But uh, So make sure you check that out. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give me the thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. And uh, also make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified every time we release new episodes. So like I said, I just got back from Record Store Day. Actually, it was probably a couple hours ago I had to take a small nap I'm, I'm old i can't stay up all night and then uh and power through the the day so I'd, uh, i took a little nap and then i decided to to kind of do this video kind of show off some of the stuff i picked up and overall i think record store day the drop two went pretty uh, pretty well kind of as expected i think um you know I, I the store i was at definitely didn't have the same crowd that uh that was there a month ago and i don't know if it was because of there was less interest in this drop or uh, the weather wasn't exactly great last night here in Michigan. It was in the mid 60s, kind of rained most of the night. It was kind of cold and uh, windy, so it wasn't maybe the the best uh, time to be sitting out all night long. I know last month for the uh, for the drop last month, it was the weather was great and we had a great time all night. And, and uh, so I don't know, like I said, if it was the weather or the drop that kind of pushed some people away. I'm sure it might have been a combination of the two, but uh, I know for last month's drop, when Dearborn Music, which is the store I shop at, when they opened their doors at 8 a.m., there was easily three or 400 people online. I, uh, If you want to go back and check that video out, I'll put a link above um, where I, I put I talked about the experience and talked about how many people there was. And there was actually, actually a video I put on there of the line when the, when the store opened up. This year, there was maybe, I'm sorry, this month, it, there was maybe... Um, Probably half of what I, what there was last month. Uh, it was a little kind of hard to tell because the line uh, moved in a different. Like last month, the line went like down the street and around the block. This month, it, the, it kind of curved around the building, came back and down the end of the street. So the line was formed a little differently. So maybe it was a little harder to tell how many people were in line. But um, I'll put a, a picture up here uh, of what I of what I saw just before the store opened up. But uh, you know, like I said, I, I think overall it went off pretty well there were a couple of titles that i thought were a little priced i think out of the range of what they should have been kind of priced so high that i decided to pass on them um, and i feel like there's always some of that in record store day but a couple of these i thought were a little high um i was really interested in that uh, bill evans behind the dykes uh but for 72 bucks i decided to pass on i just couldn't pull the trigger on that one there was also um the let's see what else was there those monkey releases which i wasn't and i'm really interested in the in those releases i wasn't gonna grab them but i was kind of surprised that those are running about 36 bucks and I've, obviously you, you can go online and, and look and different places have it you know, pretty priced pretty similarly within a dollar or two um one that uh so, so the store I, I shop at, Dearborn Music, the, what they do at 8 a.m. when the doors open up is they give you a list. Here's my list. And you kind of go over and you mark off what you want. And then they uh, they pull it and and send you a text message when your order is, is pulled and you go and pay for it. And when I was going through the list, I kind of missed this one. And after the fact, after seeing the price, I probably wouldn't have grabbed it anyway. Um, but it was one that I was on the fence about. And it was the, the Matrix collection, which it looks like a great set. But uh, so when I went, went through the list, I was looking through the soundtracks. I was looking through through various artists. Um, I even went through Don uh, Davis, who was the the composer for for the album. I uh, and I didn't see it. So actually, I didn't think my store actually even had this album. And then after the fact, I'd walked outside after I bought my albums and I heard a couple of guys talking about it and someone there, cause they were talking about how the store didn't have it. They were really surprised because Dearborn music typically gets everything for record store day. You know, even if it's just one copy of it, they tend to have everything. And, uh, uh so they're kind of surprised it wasn't on the list and somebody else walking by heard their conversation was like, well, no, it was kind of listed strange on the list. And if you look, it's actually listed under score on here. So I thought that was kind of strange, um, 
but it was 60 bucks. The prices on here aren't aren't real prices because they're running 15 percent off. So what the, what they were charging was about 60 bucks for that album, which, like I said, it's a great album. But for that price, I I, I just couldn't pull the trigger on that one. Uh, one that was kind of high that I did pull that I did buy that I'll get to was the uh, Rolling Stones Hot Rocks for 55 bucks. I mean, I, I, the Rolling Stones stuff is always going to be expensive, but uh, I don't know. I thought that was a great one. I'll, I'll get to that one here in a minute. So for this drop, you know, uh, I was Ian and I were looking forward to going and 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 doing a a live video like we did for last month, but unfortunately Ian had to work, so he and he couldn't get it to his uh, shifts switched. So I was going out there alone, but uh, I decided to, my son actually, Jack, decided to come out there with me. And, uh, well, he decided he was able to stay until probably about 2 o'clock in the morning. And then he was a little too cold and uh, a little too bored, so he decided to go home. But um, I was able to, uh, so Jack and I were actually second and third in line this this drop. Uh, the person that was there first got there about, I want to say he got there at 10, and Jack and I got there about uh, 45 minutes later or so. Maybe it was a little closer to 11. But um, so we were actually second and third. Uh, Mike from the Vinyl Den Facebook group was actually first in line. So it was kind of cool. We got to hang out and talk music for a little while before some other people started showing up. But uh, overall, it was a really cool night. Um, you know, I didn't have to spend it out there completely alone. But uh, so, yeah, it was a the, the, the experience of... of Record store day is always really fun for me. I, I always love sitting out there for, you know, eight plus hours and just talking music with people and talking records. It's a, it's a really kind of cool night. So there were a couple of non record store day titles that I did pick up. One is one that I talked about on my Tuesday video that was coming out this week. One that I was kind of looking forward to because I just really got into this band. This is the Black Pumas Capital Cuts. This is a live album and it, um, it's on uh, red vinyl. Looks pretty cool. It uh, definitely one I can't. Uh, I'll be looking forward to, to spinning. And then uh, the next one is one that um, when I got home and showed my wife, she <laughs> rolled her eyes at me. And that's because it's uh, another copy of the Dark Side of the Moon. And this is actually a. I think this is a 2012 Australian pressing. It's the quad mix, and it's actually on pink vinyl, which is kind of cool. So it kind of goes along with the. Uh, I've got the 1977 French official pressing of animals on pink. So it kind of goes with that. But um, I don't know. It's a, I, I have a different version of this pressing. I've got a, um, I've got a picture disc. It's the, only, it's the only bootleg picture disc I think I have. Maybe not. There might, there might be another one. I think I do have a, uh, a Childish Gambino one. But anyway, I got the. Uh, I thought the picture just looked really cool. I knew it wasn't going to sound great, but uh, but it's a 2012 Australian pressing also. So it's been kind of cool to kind of compare the two bootlegs, the picture disc, which doesn't sound all that great uh, compared to, to this pressing. All right, so on to the Record Store Day uh, releases. The first one, this is the Open Door by Evanescence. I'm not a huge fan of this band, but um, I've definitely got more into their music over the last couple of years. I picked up Fallen, which is their album before this. Um, I think early last year, I think maybe I, I got it. It might have been the year before, but uh, within the last year or so, I picked it up. So this is one that I didn't initially have on my list for Record Store Day, but uh, I eventually came around to, to picking it up. I know someone on the Vinyl Done Facebook group had talked about their new album, and how great it was, and, and uh, so I went back and kind of checked that out, and I was really, I actually really did enjoy uh, a lot of the tracks off their new album, so I kind of went back and started listening to some other stuff, and uh, uh, this is a really great album, it was, I think it's really underrated, so it's uh, one that I was really looking forward to grabbing, and it, uh, I think this is on like a black and gray splatter, I think, so it's kind of a cool looking album, love the splatter look to it. The next one is one that I don't think was on the uh, original record store to list. I might have missed it, maybe not. I, I, I'm not really sure. But um, this is Hail Satin by by the DG's Foo Fighters. The album cover looks really sweet. I love how the, the look of that. It, uh, there's the back cover there, so it kind of has that same kind of foil look to it. Uh, th so this is... The, the Foo Fighters doing... The, the first side of this is Bee Gees covers, which I'm not... Uh, 
Yeah, I'm, I, I guess I do like some of that uh, Bee Gees disco stuff. Um, you know, but that's not. I'm not a huge fan of it. I'm definitely a bigger fan of some of the Bee Gees earlier work in the late '60s, where they had like kind of that psychedelic rock kind of sound. If you haven't listened to that stuff uh, from their from the their catalog from the from the late '60s. Definitely go back and check that out because it's uh, very, very different from that uh, the BG sound that a lot of people think of. But uh, the other cool thing is the the side B on this is live versions of songs off their new album. So really kind of cool if you're not a, a big Bee Gees fan or big disco fan. Um, you know, you might be more interested in side B of this album. But uh, looks really cool, and it's uh, it's on black vinyl, so it's uh, just a standard black. I did forget to talk about the insert on this uh, this DG album because I thought this was really cool because I, I pulled it out to see what uh, what color, if it was on colored vinyl or anything like I said it's on black but I noticed the uh, I love the picture on the inside of that it's the uh, the insert so it definitely has that uh, I think they were going for the 70s BGs kind of look looks kind of cool kind of goes along with the uh, overall theme of the album. The next one is one that I definitely had on my list from, from early on when the list was first released. And this is Miles Davis Champions. This is the, the uh, complete Jack Johnson sessions. If, you don't, if you're unfamiliar with this, Jack Johnson was the first black uh, heavyweight champion. And uh, you know he dealt with a lot of racial stuff back in the early 1900s. He was a great boxer. And Miles Davis was a huge boxing fan. And in 1971, I think it was, they did a, or it was either 1970 or 71, they did a documentary on Jack Johnson and Miles Davis did the soundtrack for it. So this, I think these, all the, these tracks were actually released, there was a box set that released back in 2003 that this was part of. So this, I don't think this is the first time that they've been made available, but I think this is the first time on vinyl, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And this is kind of cool because I love the, uh, you know, obviously, the the boxing picture on the front, and then this is actually a really kind of cool neon yellow, just like solid color there. Looks pretty cool though. Love the Miles Davis in the middle there. Another one that I had on my list from the very beginning. This is the uh, the Pearl Jam Alive. This is a uh, not a huge fan of the twelve inch singles, but. Uh, you know, I'm a huge Pearl Jam fan, so this is definitely one that uh, I wanted to grab. And this is the uh, so this is the 30th anniversary of the the release of Alive as a, a, a single. So this has Alive, and there's a couple other rare tracks on there, and then it has I don't know if you can see it, but it's got like the Pearl Jam stick man etching on the backside of it. There you go. It's a good picture right there. So kind of a cool one. Definitely one that uh, I was looking forward to grabbing. The last two or two that I actually haven't even opened yet, so I'll open them now. But the, the first one, like I said, this is one that I wasn't initially really looking forward to. I didn't have it on my list. I ended up deciding to grab it because there was some pretty cool stuff on here. This is the Rolling Stones Hot Rocks. This is the uh, the 50th anniversary release of this album. came out in 71. And it's uh, just got a bunch of great tracks on here. It's got um, you know, a lot of stuff from the from the from the '60s, '64 to '71. You know, I can't get no satisfactions on here. Uh, Paint it black, under my thumb, Ruby Tuesday, Jumpin' Jack, Flash, uh, Wild Horses, which is one of my favorite uh, Rolling Stone songs, is on here. So, Sympathy for the Devil is another great one. So, it's a really cool one to pick up. It says that it's uh, obviously a limited edition. You know, it's uh, on yellow vinyl, which. I'm not sure if any of the other Rolling Stones releases have been on colored vinyl, except for the one that came off a of record store day last year. The 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 uh, uh, what was it the Let It Bleed, the the really expensive one hundred dollar one, which just wasn't a whole lot better at fifty five bucks is what I paid for this one. But uh, it says it has some uh, lithographs on here, so I'm gonna pop this thing open. You know, it's got a cool OB strip on the side there. See, I definitely love the artwork on this. this is probably one of my favorite. Uh, covers from the rolling stones this and uh beggar's banquet's another one that's uh, got a great cover on it there's the back and let's see what these so it's on yellow vinyl yeah see i like that i think i think i like the translucent color a little more than the solid like for the uh for that miles davis it's actually a similar similar color just uh translucent but it uh, looks pretty cool. And here's the insert for the other album. 
with all the covers on it. So that's kind of cool. It's got that same, it's the same yellow. Let's see, this is kind of just pictures of the band. Kind of goes along with the uh, back cover. These lithographs are pretty cool looking. Is it, is it two of the same thing? It is. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think that's the same picture twice. <laughs> so I don't know if I got two of them or if they're supposed to be like that. But uh, it's pretty cool packaging. There's the inside of the gatefold. But uh, definitely looking forward to giving this one a spin. And then the last one is another one that uh, I had on my list since the beginning. Another one that I haven't opened yet because when I got home from from uh, records from the record store this morning, it wasn't in disguise yet. So I wanted to kind of keep the hype stickers and everything on there in case I needed to put it in. But uh, it's in discogs now, so I'll be able to open it up. But uh, this is the 10th anniversary release of the Sea of Memories by Bush. I was a big Bush fan from the, at least their first couple of albums, and then I kind of, and I think the late '90s, I kind of lost some interest in their music. But I've kind of rediscovered them over the last couple of years, so I tend to kind of go back and pick up all their all their releases. So this is one that I was really kind of looking forward to. It says it's on um, white and blue. I think it's like a swirled vinyl. So I'll open it up and take a look and see what it looks like. So when it says blue and white, it's not exactly what I thought it would look like, but uh, I mean it looks really cool. I love the way the the, the way. It, I wish the white in the middle would have been a little brighter though. I think it would have gave it a better overall look, but it looks really sweet. Let me pull the second disc out and see if it uh, looks the same. Yeah, it does. Actually, I, I kind of like the pattern of the, the second desk a little more, a little wider on there. I think the, the darker blues over top of that white looks pretty sweet, too. So, I don't know. It's the uh, 10th anniversary release of Sea of Memories. Well, that's all I got for you this week, guys. Thanks for checking the show out. Thanks for checking out uh, all the stuff I picked up for Record Store Day. It ended up being a really great time. I uh, I had it, it was a, It's always a fun event. Um, you know, drop me a comment down below and let me know what you guys picked up or if you guys missed out on something or, uh, you know, if I know there's a bunch of stuff that was supposed to come out this uh, drop that actually got pushed to hopefully Black, Black Friday is when we'll see it come out. But uh, I don't know. I, I'm excited for Black Friday. You know, I, I always have fun at these record store day events, but uh, I don't know. You know, drop me a comment. Let me know what you guys think. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and uh, come back and check out the show next week. We'll have a new video, a new uh, new release video for next week up on Tuesday. And then we'll have a video up on Thursday and then another video uh, with me and Ian next Sunday. But uh, until next time, keep on spinning, guys. Peace. Peace.